A very good morning to all of you. In the name of Allah, most gracious and most merciful, we begin the inaugural function of the two days National Conference on Changing Dimensions of Scholarly Communication and Role of Libraries to Attain Inclusive Knowledge Society, organized by Department of Library and Information Science, University of Kashmir. I, on my own behalf and on behalf of Department of Library and Information Science, University of Kashmir, welcome you all to the two-day national conference on changing dimensions of scholarly communication and the role of libraries to attain inclusive knowledge society. The theme of this particular conference is a special discussion on scholarly communication and creation of knowledge society. As we know that scholarly communication is a system through which research and other scholarly writings are created, evaluated for quality, disseminated to the scholarly community, and preserved for future use. The system includes both formal means of communication, such as publications in peer-reviewed journals and information channels, such as electronic listeners. Scholarly communication is frequently depicted as a life cycle, documenting the steps involved in the creation, publication, dissemination and discovery of a piece of scholarly research. All across the globe, the scholarly communication has changed the society towards betterment as it has helped to attain new knowledge bases or added to the existing knowledge domains. Scholarly communication has always been a focus of libraries. Libraries and information centers have always played the scholarly communication to have always helped the scholarly community to fulfill their scholarly goals and endeavors. New emerging channels and forms of scholarly communication put new challenges in terms of their adaptability. With the advances in information and communication technology, libraries and information professionals can now have access to scholarly information produced in any part of the world and can pass the same to the scholarly community in every corner of the world. Library and information professionals try their level best to produce information literates who are having following set of skills, understand the need to use information and define their research topic. Identify the range of information resources available. Locate and access information using different library collections. Use research tools to locate relevant information by applying effective research strategies. Identify and use subject-specific library databases. Use information independently and critically. Locate and evaluate quality information, cite information, and use it in a responsible and ethical manner. Present conference will focus on changing landscape of scholarly publications, role of information professionals in the equivalence of new and emerging scholarly channels, new challenges and opportunities concerning the management and provision of various scholarly channels, barriers to scholarly communication and role of libraries, open access and its impact on the scholarly communication, trust, transparency, and transformation in scholarly communication, scholarly communication, and social media. We have received uh, number of papers, and these papers will be presented in different sessions during these two days. We believe that all the participants will get benefited from the ideas presented by the participants during these two days. With these words, I wish you all the best and hope you all have a pleasant stay for the next two days. Thank you all for your presence and participation. With these words, once again, we welcome you all. Let me start with a small couplet. That andaze bayan garche bahut shokh nahi hai. Andaze bayan garche bahut shokh nahi hai. Shayat ki utar jaye tere dil mein meri baat. The topic of this conference, there are three important aspects of this topic. One is scholarly communication. Second is role of libraries. And third is inclusive knowledge society. All the three aspects are very, very important for human race and its development. As far as scholarly communication is concerned, we are all aware that it forms the backbone of works of academics, the scholars, and the researchers. 
we are also aware that it has been a continual quest of the scholars to explore the relevant scholarly information and make use of it in furthering the research. That is how knowledge grows. That is what Dr. Ranganathan, father of library science in India, has put it as a spiral of scientific method. So, the scholarly communication is a very, very important aspect. Actually, what the scientists and the scholars want to, they want to publish the fruits of their research in peer-reviewed scholarly journals for the sake of inquiry and knowledge without any payment, without any motive of payment. But unfortunately, what happens that all their efforts of publication, all their efforts that go in their research, are somehow minimized because of the publishing word. We know the publishers, they have already mon monopolized the scholarly communication. Whatever we want to get published, we have to contact them. And the first thing, we are all aware that the first thing which they do, as soon as your paper is accepted for publication, they get the copyright of your article signed in their favor. Once the article is published, then you know the access to that article is very, very difficult. Not only for the author, but also for the institution to which he belongs. In such a situation, the scholar gets frustrated because his aim of distribution of this research in a free environment to as many scholars as possible, that is not achieved. You see, the institutions invest a lot of money in research. That is one thing. Second thing is that they, institutions cannot buy each and everything. Each and every journal they cannot subscribe. That is also a problem. So we have two things. One is the cost of publications is rising and the budget of the library for the subscription of the journals it's sharply dwindling. It's like this, a candle burning from both the ends. You know, as the things are passing since our independence, we have to keep in mind the recommendations of the commissions of higher education. If you recall, the Radha Krishnan Commission, way back in 1947, you find that uh, 1948, they had recommended some formula for developing the budget of the library. And people here, sitting here, they know that 
they have given two things. One is 6.25% of the total budget of the university will form the library budget. Or rupees 40. Think of 1948 I am talking of. Rupees 40 per student will constitute the budget, library budget of the university. Then Kothari Commission also made a mention. And what did he do? He increased this budget from 6.25% to 6.50%. So the problem is, after that, this sort of commitment is non-existent in all the commissions for higher education. सौ खुलूस बातों में सब कर्म ख्यालों में बस ज़रा सी वफ़ा कम है तेरे शहर वालों में जो मेरी ऑब्जर्वेशन है अपने ये 35 इयर्स में वो है कि we are flooded with information, but we are starving in knowledge. So the basic challenge is how to convert data into information, information into knowledge, and knowledge into wisdom, and how to apply that wisdom for uh, improving the quality of life and work of people, nations. So biggest gap is capacity gap, and we have to build competence of people on the, by doing this uh, uh, human resource development. So what is the issue? The basic issue is that we are to convert liabilities into assets. I have seen that the majority of the people are suffering from technomania and technophobia. But we should keep this in mind that technology is a tool. Technology is not the master. The master is our core values. So we are to focus on our core values. The National Knowledge Commission in India, it was constituted in 2005. It was clearly focusing on three things. Inclusion, equity, and excellence. And today, new national education policy is also saying the same thing. And same thing we are talking in the sustainable development goals, 17 goals, where goal number four is saying clearly that in case of education, no one should be left behind. So the, the topic, first of all, I want to congratulate the Department of Library and Information Science and the University of Kashmir authorities for choosing such a timely topic that is uh, changing dimensions of scholarly communication and role of libraries in building an inclusive society. Now, what is happening when we are talking of this uh, Scholarly communication. What is happening? Well, there are well, three, four things. One is social media. Social media or new media. So, the, see, WhatsApp has given a biggest death blow to the constraints of space and time. Anywhere, anytime you can communicate with anyone, whether he is in a uh, uh, village or he is any country. So, social media is doing. Then citizen journalism. We are not consumer of information. We are consumers. We are producing information and we are using information as well. When we are talking of scholarly communication, see social media is there. We are making journal news. But when we are talking of scholarly communication, I still feel that majority of the people are having capacity gap how to get data, how to evaluate information, how to write a good paper, and how to publish that paper. So for that, we need to have uh, training workshops or training programs. So only that way, we can improve our scholarly communication. But basic problem, which is worrying me, that uh, we are, when we are talking of the impact factor, still we are talking of the quality which is based on the number of citations. We are judging the quality on quantity. So that may be true for science, engineering, and technology, but that is not good for humanities and other subjects. So that is the paradox of impact factor. 
such uh, gatherings, such uh, seminars, such discussions will in turn elaborate to all the participants, especially young faculty members, as to how they can achieve the goals. I remember when I was a scholar, we had to move to the seventh floor of Iqbal Library to collect data and read books one by one and note the references on small uh, pages and then try to quote those references in the uh, thesis or in the papers that we used to publish. Nowadays, the scenario is that I can visit any suitable site as per my needs, as per my requirements and check what is the status of the field on which I am going to work or I am working on and try to download, if possible, all whole reference, not only abstracts. Those days, in, and during my tenure, we had to actually note down only the abstract on a small sheet and keep those sheets sequentially arranged, alphabetically arranged to quote them in the uh, bibliography of our thesis. Now, the scenario has entirely changed. Similarly, when you used to assess the quality of the publications those days, we look at the journal name. Nowadays, we can assess the quality of the journal as well as what is the impact of that journal on my profile as such. Such themes in turn will enlighten not only the teachers but also the youngsters, especially students and scholars, as to what the impact of quality publications is. Generally, as was earlier referred, that sometimes you can publish a paper within a span of one month. Sometimes it may take time. But one should also at that time try to check if somebody is asking me to submit a paper and get it published within a span of one month, what is the emergency of publication and what's the quality of assessment of the team who wants to publish my paper? I have seen because we were assessing the profiles of different teachers of different schools altogether. In some cases, publications were of superior quality even though number was limited. Publication number was 10, 12, 13 or sometimes even 20 maximum. Once we checked the overall profile of the person, his score was wonderful. I appreciate the role of the uh, library as well as the Department of Library Sciences because they educate us. And once we look at that and look at the profile of certain faculty members, certain scholars, we are surprised that they are not able to achieve what are the basic requirements, the goals. It shows that we must try to educate not only the faculty members but also the research scholars as to what are the fundamental criteria they should look for. I have a couple of suggestions for the organizers that why don't they invite scholars from different schools for a particular session to get enlightened as to what the role of publications can be in the upliftment of their careers, what the role of the quality of the journal can be, and how they can intend attain that particular status wherein their recruitment as well as their promotion can become easy and can become possible. Sometimes people look at numbers, sometimes people look at accessible journals, but they don't bother about the quality as well as the overall impact of that journal. This is the need of the hour and such seminars can enlighten not only among faculty members but also among young scholars as to how they can actually enrich themselves to attain or to achieve the goals that have been drafted. Ordinarily, numbers don't matter. Accessibility of the journals don't matter. We have certain journals not accessible, but still at least we, if we look at the impact of that journal, quality of that journal, quality of the publications in those journals, we get enriched as to what we can do. Last year we had to pay almost uh, 50 lakh rupees through different sources for the Iqbal Library to get upliftment in terms of getting accessibility journals. We did that. That was for what? For the uh, upliftment of the plans as well as goals of the university as a whole. In this department also I visited a couple of times to conduct VIVAs. What I saw there, the facilities and the encouragement of the scholars, that was wonderful. Because that way we can in turn enlighten our youngsters as to what they can do. I hope and pray during the present uh, three to two days uh, deliberations, every participant can in turn enlighten each other as to what can be achieved, what is to be highlighted so that our youngsters be able, will be able to achieve the goals. Since uh, as was highlighted in the beginning, we have a short, time span, a short time span and also I have to visit some other centre for a different meeting. I hope and pray that during these two deliberations, two-day deliberations, the outcome would be highlighted and I will request the honourable organisers to uh, leave, uh, upload that on the university profile because all the participants can get the information here, but those who are not able to participate, they will get enlightened by reading that outcome of this seminar. Such outcomes can in turn facilitate not only scholars but also youngsters who are still in the study stage 
to see what can be done in future for the upliftment of not only their careers but also of the department and institution of which they are a part. I hope and pray the deliberation will be shared uh, within a span of a couple of days so that everybody will know exactly what has been achieved in this particular seminar for two-day duration. Thank you very much. At the University of Kashmir, we try under the leadership of our present Vice Chancellor, Honorable uh, Professor Nilafarji, we try to facilitate the Department for Procurement of uh, Books and even the journals. We at University of Kashmir, we have got a digitized copy of every research article and every research journal and that is available in the, in the central library. Earlier, during our childhood days, we see that there were certain setup of libraries in the villages and the cities and the towns, which used to be play a role of what we see that the treasure of knowledge or the uh, treasure of civilization is even. But uh, I don't know who, are the, who, is, who is the main responsible for, 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 for those vanishing of those libraries, whether it is the it is we who have not visited those libraries at different intervals and it has lost its glory or probably maybe I may be wrong that uh, procurement of certain books in those libraries which have uh, resulted in the uh, in the disinterest of the of the scholars and readers. Uh, the type of activity that has been organized today, the program that has been organized today will be beneficial for each and every uh, one sitting in the hall. Uh, believe me, the type of uh, schedule that have framed uh, is of immense importance and they'll have different sessions. Uh, one of the sessions is how to write a scholarly article, how to write your research uh, you know, article in open access journals. Uh, we were, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, since I have joined, what I uh, realized, of course, we have uh, very good publications of our faculty, no match, they can uh, be compared, uh, you know, globally with any, uh, you know, uh, research publication. But, uh, you know, in a system, there's always, we can categorize three uh, ties. We can categorize upper, middle, and lower one. Uh, we wanted to organize these types of activities for the one uh, who are I, who are little late back. I will not say sluggish, but little late, uh, late back in uh, learning the technology. And uh, we all know that it's very important to learn uh, technology because uh, you know uh, technology and knowledge we take in our hands today I remember the days when I was doing my PhD till seven seven o'clock I used to be in the Iqbal library writing my notes you know collecting reviews and all that uh, taking help from uh, you know people from library but times have changed uh, we see uh, that our own scholars uh, sometimes, you know, they will come with the information which even the guides don't know about it. But I'm sure the type of confusion that our scholars have, uh, especially our PhD scholars have, they do good work. But uh, where to publish their articles, how to publish their articles, uh, there's a need to train them. And I'm sure this activity will take care of that. I would definitely like our Department of Library Sciences uh, to, uh, you know, take up these types of activities very frequently. It could be co in collaboration with uh, other departments uh, so that uh, we address the difficulties of our research scholars and uh, faculty. I would request all my students, uh, it's a great, uh, you know, learning experience when you physically take a book with you and uh, you read it. Uh, now, you know, lately I have forgotten this habit but uh, I had a habit, you know, uh, of at least uh, taking up a book and uh, reading it, you know, uh, whatever type of book uh, it would be. I would uh, love to read it sometimes when it was a long journey traveling by air to any other country. I would definitely keep a book in my bag and try to uh, read it. And uh, it not only helps to improve your vocabulary, it helps to improve your communication skills, 
in addition to your knowledge, in addition to your, you know, learning the spellings and all that. So I would advise my students to definitely not to forego this habit. We have such a uh, good library in our, uh, you know, university. Kindly make use of it. Our, uh, you know, uh, old colleagues have developed it so well. We should definitely be frequent uh, visitors to our library and uh, use it. I must uh, request, uh, you know, uh, Shabir Saab, uh, we should always, uh, you know, take uh, advice of our senior colleagues. Uh, who are uh, not frequent visitors to this university now, but I know their talent, talent. And uh, with these words, uh, I really congratulate you. And uh, I wish uh, a success to your program and a very good learning experience to all the participants who are here and a pleasant stay to our participants who have come from outside the Kashmir and are Experts also, I would request them to be in touch uh, with the department and give us your expertise wherever needed. Thank you very much.